was born in Poland, learned to swim in India, and ended up swimming for Australia. As much as he moved during his youth, swimming was always a constant in his life. Settling in Melbourne, it wasn't long before Michael Clem was noticed by the Australian Institute of Sport. He was 15 when he was asked to move and train in Canberra by coach Gennady Turetsky, coach of Aisha Honoré and sprinting great Alexander Popov. Clem specialized in freestyle and butterfly events and was the Australian Swimming Rookie of the Year in 1995 and made his first Olympic appearance in Atlanta in 1996. But his big breakthrough came at the 1998 Indo World Championships in Perth. Clem went 7 for 7 in medals, four of which were gold. He won the 100 butterfly and 200 freestyle, but his best performances came on relays. Australia's 4x200 freestyle relay team won by 4 seconds, and the 4x100 medley relay team handed the Americans their first loss in a major international competition. That performance set the stage for the 2000 Summer Olympic Games in Sydney. Clem was one of the main attractions for the Australian team and was set to lead off in the heavily hyped match with the United States in the 4x100 free relay. Prior to Sydney, the United States was undefeated in the Olympic Games in that relay. And things were made more interesting when American Gary Hall Jr. predicted that the Americans would smash the Aussies like guitars. Leading off, Clem set the tone early with his powerful underwater dolphin kicks and swam so fast that he broke the world record in the 100 free. The relay came down to Ian Thorpe and Gary Hall as Thorpe ran him down and solidified a monumental upset. The Aussie team celebrated. <laughs> Clem swam the second leg on the 4x200 freestyle relay team that won by five seconds and set a new world record. He won two more silver medals in Sydney in the 100 butterfly and 4x100 medley relay. After Sydney, Clem was plagued by a series of injuries that put his career off course. But he made his third Olympic team in 2004 winning a silver medal in the 4x200 freestyle relay, with the U.S. getting its revenge from their loss four years earlier. Clem retired in 2007, but announced a comeback in 2011, toying with the idea of trying to make the 2012 Olympic team. But he was unsuccessful and retired for good in 2012. Clem is the founder of Milk, a successful skincare line for men, women, and babies. He lives in Valley and is a full-time father of three. Clem will forever be remembered as a great underwater kicker, a great relay swimmer, and a great leader for Australian swimming. Ladies and gentlemen, I shouldn't say distinguished guests because everyone here is very distinguished. Um, f first of all, like everyone had said previously to me, this is a great honour. Um, for someone that didn't quite get that individual gold at the Olympic Games, it's a, it's a great honour to stand here with 21 world records, a number of world championships and, and a great, I felt that I was able to contribute in the, in the, way, in the fashion that I'd like to, um, to the Australian swimming team. First of all, I want to thank, like everyone else did, my parents. Um, <laughs> Thank, because of our, our trans, <laughs> we had a quite a transient. Um, well, I had a transient upbringing, and my childhood. We moved around the world, as you heard, and swimming became probably the most secure thing that I had. It's, schools changed, languages changed, but I could always go to a swimming pool and fit right into that swimming group. And for me, so I guess I, I owe them. Um, the fact that we were always packing up and moving countries. But um, for me, I found swimming, I probably learned that around the same time as I uh, learned to swim at the time I used to walk. So around the age of two, which I was a late walker. But um, I want to thank all the, um, uh, I guess the, the Hall of Fame uh, for inducting me. It's a, it's a privilege. And the Aussie contingent that's in the room from Matthew Mitchum, um, John Sieben, Mr. Ambassador and Ursula who can't be here. Um, swimming is in our culture and it's in our blood, so um, we're trying to swim above ourselves, so to speak. So 
Uh, this wouldn't be possible, well, I wouldn't be standing here if it wasn't for the Australian Sports Commission, from the Australian AIS, the Australian Olympic Committee as well, um, and, and Swimming Australia. We certainly would like to always emulate the, um, the Americans the way they used to swim. Um, and I guess we learnt a lot from you guys. So to be in this room and to be, in, uh, to be uh, inducted and also to be in the same room as so many of you is a great honour. Um, it's also a special moment to have my partner Michelle here as well who's come all the way from Australia. My parents are here as well. So um, thank you guys for being present. I, I, I think uh, the great thing about swimming is that it taught me basically it was the fastest grow, you know, growth, personal growth lesson that I've ever had. Uh, you know, as Dora mentioned, it teaches you discipline, the drive, purpose. Um, I found my passion very early in life and um, I think we're all very lucky to have found that. So, um, and I've taken those learnings into life after sports. So, I think uh, most of you can vouch for it. Swimmers are very employable, you know, we're quite devoted, we're, we're, we're driven, um, we're competitive, so uh, I try and always surround myself with like-minded people, still have the same passion in life for, for what I, whatever I embark on. So um, I think swimming, I owe everything to, to the sport and to the people, to the community of swimming, not just um, Australian swimming, but for the world of swimming, because uh, like Peter said before, I think I've gone over three minutes, but what Peter said before is there's so many people involved in the sport from coaches, officials, um, timekeepers, etc. So, um, and our community is so strong that I, you know, without my teammates like Brett Hawke, who's um, one of my best friends, Ian Thorpe, Grant Hackett, we were in this great era, we were riding a wave of success and um, we were, I guess, every each one of us were trying to lead by example. So, um, as I said, thank you for everyone that's contributed to my career, especially um, my family, uh, Michelle, and um, my kids who can't be here. I've got Stella, Frankie, and Rocco. None of them, unfortunately, is uh, taking into my, my footsteps, but as long as they take on life in the same fashion, with the same purpose and drive, I'll be happy. But thanks again for having me. Um, I'm not sure if I can have as many beers as Jono, He's, he's, uh, he's, he's hard to beat, but um, yeah, I look forward to meeting most of you, some, some of my childhood heroes, as a, including John, but um, Rowdy Gaines and many others, uh, Greg Leganis, um, I remember watching you guys when I was actually living in Germany at the time, um, so watching the commentary in, in another language was interesting, but uh, um, yeah, it was a great honour to be here and um, yeah, look forward to meeting you all. Thanks guys.